Hello world, this video is about Mobius inversion. It is a very cool trick. If you don't know about this method, then I will recommend you to watch uh, the complete video because just by uh, investing a couple of your minutes and you will going to learn a very cool technique to solve certain classes of problems very easily. And in my opinion, uh, this is uh, very hard to forget. So, yeah. So, what is Mobius inversion actually? This is the classic definition of Mobius inversion. It states that if the first statement is true, then it implies the second statement. As for now, just don't bother about this method. Uh, we will not going to use it. But instead, we will going to use certain property of it. Uh, which is uh, I think more important so let's just see uh, what is the property this is the property that I had been telling about you earlier don't get scared by this uh, this is the only thing that you have to remember and trust me this is super easy once you get a hang of it you will going to solve some really cool problems with this property and uh, it is very easy to remember just bear with me for a second uh, let's start. Uh, let's understand this. What all these mean and what are this? So uh, we will start with this one, epsilon n. Uh, it is. I'm not sure, but I think it is called unit function. So I'm not sure about it. Uh, what it means is, you will going to get one if n is one and zero otherwise. So if this uh, the value of this unit function is one, so, uh, that means epsilon one is one and epsilon any other number which is not one is zero. For example, epsilon two is zero. And this is just a fancy way of saying exactly this. This bracket, if you don't know, is called Iverson bracket. And inside it, uh, there can be some statement which is written inside it and whenever that statement is true this function will return 1 and if that statement is false this function will going to return 0 so n is 1 right uh, oh, I mean uh, this is just equivalent to this when n is 1 mm, this statement is true so it returns 1 and when n is any number other than 1 it will going to return 0 so we have understand uh, what is this unit function. This uh, you can remember this. You can came across this many times. So now let's understand this function. I know the name of this because this is why we are here. It is called Mobius function. There's two dots above O. So. Uh, what is the meaning of this function? Let's understand that. So, mu n is equal to 1 minus 1 to the power r if n can be written in this way p1 into p2 dot 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 pr and 0 otherwise. This is also called if n is square free. Uh, what is the meaning of square free? So let's understand that. Uh, we are going to take example uh, through which you will uh, be super clear what I mean. So mu 100. Let's take, uh, we are going to calculate mu 100. Mu 100 can be written as mu 2 square 5 square. It is not square free because uh, the primes have power more than 1. Here you can see all numbers should have one power and square free means any square uh, if that number is not divisible by any square prime number so here you can see a uh, two square is divisible by this number so the easy way of saying this is uh, a number is square free when if you convert in into prime factor all those primes should be uh, sh should have uh, one uh, one power so here the power of mm, is more than one uh, so 
and five is also so five square is also divisible by this number so it is not square free so it is zero let's take another example mu 70 it can be written as mu 2 into 5 into 7 this is square free because all those powers of prime are 1 so um, since the number of primes is odd uh, minus 1 to the power 3 will going to give us minus 1 let's take another example mu 100 oh I have already taken say 210 so mm, 210 is mu 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 so this, these, this is also square free and the number of such primes are 4 so it is 1 which is even let's take the last example mu 135 this can be written as mu 3 cube into 5 this is also not square free because the power is more than more than 1 so 3 square is divisible by this number so it is not square free so it is 0 I hope you have understand what the Mobius function is and let's try to prove this equation the property says that sum of mu values of all those divisors this function will is nothing but our unit function this is not sigma this is unit function these two are very similar and uh, how do we actually prove this let's take for n equal to 1 how many divisors of n when n is 1 this will uh, be 1 by definition let's prove that this is also 1 so there is only one divisor that is 1 so what is the value of mu 1 <coughs> 1 is square free right because there is no such prime that divides 1 there is no such square prime that divides 1 also mm, 1 cannot be represented as a product of prime so the number of primes mm, through which 1 can be represented is 0 so mu 1 is minus 1 to the power 0 that is 1 so this this is also 1 when n is 1 let's say for n greater than 1 this is 0 let's write n as a product of prime p1 to the power r1 into p2 to the power r2 dot 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 pk to the power rk let's say um, I'm just taking a random number p1 square p2 this is a divisor of n and what is the mu value of this because this is not square free its mu value is 0 so we do not consider numbers such as this we will only going to consider numbers which are actually square free so what can be the possible numbers one possible number is one of the divisor can be one the uh, and other ways is the number of divisor can be uh, whose product of prime in which number of primes is one is um, you can choose any one say p1 p2 or p3 or p4 all are valid valid so it is uh, kc1 ways in which you can choose one and when uh, one divisor can be in this form p1 p2 or p2 p3 and how many ways you can choose these because these are also square free it is like kc2 right and similarly all those divisors that are square free can be written as kc3 dot 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 k c k my uh, mm, dot 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 kck right now uh, and this can be written as one can be written as kc0 now all these values will going to give us uh, one and all odd values kc1 will going to give us minus one because that is by definition since p1 is just a, a single number if p1 so it will going to give us one minus one now there is a very nice property that nc1 plus nc3 plus nc5 
डॉट 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 प्लस एन सी एन माइनस वन और एन सो आई आई विल नॉट गोइंग टू वेदर एन इज इवन और आर्ट सो आई विल नॉट गोइंग टू राइट इट इज इक्वल टू एन सी जीरो प्लस एन सी टू प्लस एन सी फोर डॉट 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 these are equal so these all will going to yield us minus 1 and these all will, will going to yield us 1 so the sum of all these term will going to be zero in every case so for all n which is not 1 this will going to give us zero and which is same as this unit function right so we have proved this now let's understand uh how can we find this this mu values of all numbers using sieve and after that we are going to apply it to solve some really cool problems how do we compute all mu values from 1 to n we will going to use sieve so if you don't know about sieve i will recommend you to learn how to compute prime numbers using sieve then come back to this video so how do we compute prime numbers from 1 to n using sieve we will first initialize an array prime with values 1 note that prime of 1 is equal to 0 should be initialized 0 but that's a special case you can write it down now for we will iterate from 2 to we will iterate from 2 to n and then if prime i is 1 then what we do then we will again iterate for j equals 2 into i j should be smaller than equal to n and j plus equals i and i'm leaving a gap uh, because i will modify it to compute sieve uh, for mu values so i'm leaving some gap and this is it right this is how we compute prime <laughs> oh i'm sorry we have to write this prime of j equals 0 means j is not prime because j is divisible by i because we are iterating multiples of i now uh, this is how we compute prime from 1 to n now we will going to add some modifications to it first one is we will iterate from i to n just don't ask me why i will tell you later so if we iterate from i to n we have to apply a special condition if j is greater than i so that this i will not become non prime now this is the first thing it's okay right we will also initialize mu values here with when why because initially we are assuming that all mu values are square free the other thing that i am assuming is that there is no such prime so all are initialized with one now what do we do all mu values are initialized with one here we will check whether j is square free how do i check it if j modulo i into i means i is a prime and i divides j modulo that means j is not square free so we will write mu j equals 0 simple right other thing is we have to check 
if j is square free and we get a new prime which divides j because i j is a multiple of i so what will we, we do in this case we will write mu j equals minus mu j because odd would have become even and even would have become odd and another thing to note if j is not uh, square free then zero will change to minus zero that doesn't matter so we don't have to write another if condition like uh, if uh, j is uh, if mu j is not equal to zero then do this so this is how we compute prime numbers uh, i'm sorry this is how we compute mu values of all numbers from one to n so now let's try to move uh, to solve some problems which we had been talking about earlier this is the first problem that I'm going to solve. Uh, the problem is to find the number of pairs of integer x, y in range 1 to n such that uh, those pairs are, are co-prime. That means their GCD is 1. So let's call uh, the our answer to be a function of n which is, uh, it can be written in this way. Sigma i equals 1 to n sigma j equals 1 to n inside diversion bracket we will write gcd of ij equals 1 this is exactly the same thing that our function demand right this gcd of ij all those pair whose gcd is 1 will going to return 1 so it will going to contribute 1 to the value this pair will going to contribute 1 to the value and all other pairs will going to contribute 0 to the value so this is what the question demands <coughs> now uh, while applying mobius inversion we will always going to look for this expression inside diversion bracket there is there can be some function which is equal to 1 so uh, we can ap apply our Mobius inversion formula. So what is our formula? Our formula is epsilon n, that is your unit function, is equal to what? It can be written in this way, which is equal to sigma d divides n and what? Mu f d. Now, uh, by replacing n with gcd ij, we can write epsilon gcd ij is equal to gcd ij plus 1 that is equal to d divides, we are replacing n with gcd ij, gcd ij mu d right we can write it in this way now this expression is exactly this expression so we are replacing this expression with this one this one so we can write fn equals i equals 1 to n sum of j equals 1 to n and sigma d such that d divides gcd of ij mu d now uh, this seems illogical right previously we have two summations which can give our complexity to o of n o of n squared now we have three summations so how does it going to help us uh it will uh going to uh, we will going to simplify this this is not so initially it looks counter in uh, intuitive but uh, we can simplify it as we uh, as you will see so we can write this expression in some other way let's write it down i equals 1 to n j equals 1 to n and we are iterating d from 1 to n to 1 to n mu d into whenever d divides gcd of ij 
why can we write it in this way let's see so this uh, will uh, going to give us all d such that d divides gcd of ij we are only adding the mu values of those d so we can just iterate d from 1 to n and uh, we uh, here it is mu d and here it is the same condition whenever d divides gcd of ij it will ret return 1 and all those cases which are not it will going to return 0 so these and these are equivalent right uh, let's simplify it further i equals 1 to n j equals 1 to n and d equals 1 to n mu d into this now when d divides gcd of i j whenever d divides i and d divides j d, d when d will divide both i and j then uh, d will also divide gcd of i j right so we can write it in this way mu d into d divides i and d divides j whenever d will divide i and d will divide j then we are sure that d will also divide the gcd so we can write it in this way now let's simplify it further i equals 1 to n j equals 1 to n d equals 1 to n we can write it in this way too mu d into inside i was in bracket all d that divides i into d that divides j d that divides j, j. <coughs> so can this and this are equivalent yes why because when d will divide i and d will divide j this function will going to return one this is when d is divide when d divides i this will return one and when d divides j this will also going to return one so one into one is one and in all other cases any one of these are both of these are zero here in all other cases this will become zero and this will become zero so it is uh, obvious that these two are equivalent right now what we are doing we are switching this with this we can uh, switch summations so we can write it in this way d equals one we are moving d in front of it one to n sum of i equals one to n sum of j equals one to n mu d into d such that d divides i into d such that d device j now it is like for uh, we can re, uh, shift mu d here because for i and g mu d is constant and we can also shift d divides i to this position because for j d divides i is a constant right d is also constant i is also constant so we by shifting these two uh, outside we can write it in d equals 1 to n mu d and sum of i equals 1 to n we are uh, we have moved this outside this j sigma d divides i and sum of j equals 1 to n d divides j now what can we say about this one for a given d d is constant we are iterating from one to for all i values from one to n that means we have to find how many number of d ex that exists that divides this that is nothing but n by d right this is nothing but n by d floor why suppose n is uh, uh, say i equals 1 and n is 
i will iterate from 1 to n say 26 right and we have d divides i and the value of d is say 5 so what are those values the values are 5 10 15 20 25 that is nothing but the floor of this that is like 26 by 5 that will going to give us all these numbers that is 5 so we can write in it in this way d equals 1 to n mu d into n by d floor of n by d into j equals 1 to n d of j similarly replace i with j it will also going to give us n by d j is also iterating from 1 to n for a fixed d so it is also n by d so we can write it in n by d squared now we are done what is the time complexity if we have already pre-computed this mu d for all n from 1 to n this will be o of n time complexity because n by d we can com compute it on the go so that's it uh, let's move to the second problem so this is the second problem we have to find the sum of gcd xy for every pair of integer xy in range n so basically what it is saying that say fn is our answer then fn is just equal to for all pair i equal to 1 to n j equal to 1 to n gcd of ij right it is saying exactly this now think of it in this way we do not have to compute it in this way for every pair for every number d let's say d from 1 to n how many times it will going to contribute to our this sum so we are iterating it in this way d equals 1 to n how many times this d, d will contribute to our answer so let's write it in this way i equals 1 to n j equals 1 to n gcd of ij such that gcd of ij is d now whenever ij is d it will contribute to our d so we these two are equivalent right and why we are writing it in this way because we want expressions like inside iverson bracket there is some function which is equal to one here it is not one we will change that but the purpose of this is exactly that here uh, we will we had changed this expression to something like this and now we are again changing it so that this d will become one how do we do that suppose i can be written as d into something a and j can be written as uh, d into something called b so we can remove that d factor altogether and in that case this n will going to decrease by d right so we can write it in this way d equals 1 to n d times i will now going to equal uh, going to become 1 to n by d similarly j will now going to iterate from 1 to n by d and we have now gcd of ij to be equal to 1 if you are wondering why this happens just replace i with a ad and j with bd so here n by d will going to become i by m means uh, n by i y a so it is like n by d and j will also going to become n by d and we will going to uh, return the same thing as before so this is how it is and then what to do now have you seen this expression before this one 
yeah we have previously seen this so what is the answer say d equals 1 to n d let's call this variable as some other variable k so we iterate k from 1 to n by d and our answer is mu of k into n by k so n is actually n by d so it is n by kd now we have solved this this is it what is the time complexity of this uh, when we will going to use apply this method it will be o of n log n where n is this n uh, why uh, because this uh, this one this is like harmonic series like uh, so first time it will iterate from n then it then it will going to iterate n by 2 then it will going to iterate n by 3 then next time why i'm adding multiply mm. and then n by 2 then n by 3 then n by 4 so this will going to iterate something like this so the time complexity will be o of uh, will be this one this one is right here so that's how it is and can this be improved further because if it is not improved further this is useless right actually there is a dp method which i will going to tell you right now which is o of n log n2 so this this uh, mobius inversion is trash right we can achieve the same complexity using a dynamic programming so why this uh I haven't talked about multiplicative functions. And I also haven't talked about linear sieve. When we learn about these two, uh, so stay tuned for that video. When we will going to learn about these two methods, we can reduce the time complexity of this two o of n assuming we have pre computed this mu k values so uh, because we require because this is a multiplicative function and we require linear sieve to compute those values and after that we can do this so stay tuned for that video and let's move on to the dp solution how we can easily compute this with dp so let's say suppose we are uh, we have n equal to 100 and we have to find uh the number of pairs whose gcd is 2 uh whose gcd is 2 right so one thing is like when we compute uh number of factors of 2 all pairs whose factors are 2 so there are 2 4 6 start dot dot till 100 right so uh the first pair you can pick any of this uh that can be uh done in 100 by 2 ways similarly the second pair that can also be picked from this is 100 by 2 right but what is the uh, and let's say uh, we call it dp of 2 to be the number of pairs that contribute to uh, whose gcd is 2 so the problem is uh, let's uh, say the pair uh, 8 and 12 it is in this one uh it uh, when we uh, take all the factors it will be in this one 8 and 12 but its gcd is actually 4 so dp of 2 is uh n by 2 means 100 by 2 into 100 by 2 n by 2 whatever it is minus dp of 4 if we have already computed dp of 4 minus dp of 6 because suppose uh this pair 
say six and twelve is in inside, then its GCD is not two. That is six. So we have to subtract minus DP of six, minus DP of eight, minus dot dot dot. All right, uh, you get what I am saying. So we will start from backward. So we uh, we have suppose our DP array in which we store the number of pairs of GCD uh, GCD is n. So for i equals n, we will start backward because for computing DP of two, we require four and six and eight. So it's better to start backward. I should be smaller than equal to one and i minus minus. What we do? Uh, DP of i equals n by i into n by i, right? for j equals 2 into n sorry for j equals we are subtracting higher multipl multipliers of uh, i 2 into i j should be smaller than equal to n j plus plus dp of j sorry dp of i minus equal to dp of j just write it in this way dp of i minus equals to dp of j As I said earlier that the time complexity of this is also O of n log n because this is also harmonic progression. Another thing is that to compute our answer, our answer should be initialized with zero. Then for i equal to one, I should be smaller than equal to n i plus plus answer plus equals dp of i into i right and that's it we get our answer overall time complexity is still o of n log n and this is the dp solution and uh, and that's why uh, we need to modify this one so that we can get a o of n complexity so stay tuned for that video thanks for watching bye